that's you can imagine that's when things really kicked off and then the born ultimatum ended up we fast forward i've got an agent i'm now acting i'm auditioning you know i'm in the system and then the the dash role in born ultimatum comes up and that was the chance to play a major character in a major movie um and do all my own action and not be doubled and and it was like wow you know and it happened pretty early on in my career because i think i graduated university when i was 21 and then i got the born role at 23. yeah so yeah it was quite quick do you, do you mind kind of walking us through kind of what that audition process was like how you landed the role and then once you got on kind of what what that experience was uh you know being on uh, such a such a huge and it's a franchise that's still going on uh, today as well so do you mind just kind of walking us through kind of what that audition no was like? i mean as long as i'm not boring anyone i feel like i've oh, told man. this story many a time but i'll happily you know i i appreciate there may be people that haven't heard the story so um i a footnote to this story that I'm about to tell is the fact that when I graduated uni, straight out of uni, I managed to land a role, a lead support role in an indie film. And whilst we were filmed, that was a very special experience. I'm, I'm actually like acting, you know, a character with an arc and dialogue and stuff, making every mistake an actor, a young actor can make under the sun in it. But one night after filming, the director, the lead of the film and myself went to the cinema to see The Born Supremacy had just come out. Yeah. I loved the first one. We watched Supremacy and I was like, wow, like these films have a really powerful, strong impact on me. So you can imagine then getting a call a year or two later saying, Joey, there's an audition. You've, you've got a request casting for the newborn movie for this new kind of agent, like more advanced to them born or whatever. You're almost like, this is insane. Like, it feels like I just watched the second one and, and you're telling me there's an opportunity that I can be in that world. I may be able to step into that universe that I've enjoyed watching. So what a request casting is, is where the casting director already knows you from previous auditions he's had you in for and specifically seeks you out to come and audition for the role as opposed to uh, the alternative situation is a casting director sends out a brief a casting brief for a particular character he's trying to cast he may go for some specific actors, request cast some specific actors he knows, but the rest of the actors that audition are just suggested. Agents put up actors on their books that they think fit that brief. And then the casting director is like, I'll see this guy, I'll see this guy, not him, I'll see him, not him. So when you get request cast, it's very special because it means you're already kind of on a short list for the director. So for the casting director. So the first audition was actually at Pinewood Studios and it was a physical, a physical audition. Um, they wanted to see whether you could ride a motorbike and or scooter with gears manual, whether you had that experience and fight. It was like fight choreography for two hours. Um, I later found out that they had already cast someone for Desh. Um, and their plan was a month's training in LA with 8711. This guy um, supposedly was just partying in LA and, and a heavy smoker and his stamina wasn't good. He was turning up for training each day, just a, a state, you know? And after two weeks, the fight choreographer, Jeff Imada, I think called the producers, uh, the producers and said, this isn't gonna work with this dude. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not taking it seriously. He's not going to be able to make the grade for what you want out of this character. So they fired the guy. Can you believe it? Yeah. Can you believe it? So now <clears throat> they have to emergency recast to this part. And there's only two weeks of rehearsal left because the guy's wasted the first two, right? 
So they need someone that's kind of box ready, you can imagine. They need someone who is already a fairly accomplished martial artist and can learn choreography, um, ride a motorbike and can act. But they're like, if you can't do the physical stuff, we're not even going to look at your acting. So the acting component was the second audition. So the first audition, there's like 60 dudes. Um, can you ride a motorbike? All the fight stuff. And then I get a call to say it's down to like three of you, three or four of you. And then it was an acting audition with the casting director. Um, the scene we had to do was actually something that, that ended up not being in the script down the line. Remember in the Bourne legacy with Jeremy Renner, do you remember that the various agents are sort of hooked on these pills that yeah. Treadstone give them? It's almost to stop them going rogue. They need to take these pills or they'll get strong withdrawal symptoms. So that is actually an artifact from the original Ultimatum script that they removed from Ultimatum and then used later. Um, they referenced the pills. Do you remember in, in the first one? Um, with Clive Owen, mm -hmm. because he remember is taking the pills. And remember he says, as he's bleeding out, having been shotgunned by Bourne, he's like, do you get the headaches? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, he's like, do you get the headaches? Like, so they hint already that the Treadstone guys are on some kind of meds, but maybe not super strong. So with Blackbriar, they thought we're gonna put them on a shorter leash with some stronger, drug withdrawal so it so to cut a long story short in the original script me and Bourne are fighting in the apartment and i'm getting the better of him and it's not looking good for Bourne. but then i start going into withdrawal and Bourne notices something's up i'm sort of breaking out in a cold sweat and sort of starting to twitch a bit and and then i'm looking for my bag trying to get to my bag to get these pills out so Bourne is then kicking the bag away and, and that was a whole thing. And then eventually I go into withdrawal, like sort of catatonic shock or whatever. And he's like, you know, cold it in, cold it in, you know, that I'm dead, whatever. So that was what I did in, in that audition, I remember. That kind of scene going into shock, they really wanted to see whether you could go, you know, 100% and, and do something very visceral. I do that one, I wait, I get a call, Joey, it's down to you and one other guy. You couldn't be more different from one another. Um, Paul Greengrass wants to meet you at his house. <laughs> We're gonna send a car for you, take you to Greengrass's place. And uh, yeah, he's, he'll make his decision. So I was like, amazing, number one. But number two, I, I said to the casting director, are they gonna, if Greengrass is going to see me and this other guy at the same time, isn't that going to be a bit awkward? Because we're kind of going to be bidding for this role of a lifetime. Yeah. At the same time, and that kid will all get a bit desperate and like dick measuring. And, 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 and he was like, that's a good point. He's like, well, look, Paul's a very smart guy. So if he, if he has asked to see you at the same time, it's for a, a good reason. There's a reason behind it. So I was like, you've got to like run a bit of strategy. I was kind of like... If I if if Paul is seeing us staggered, then um, and I just have him to myself, I'll just be myself and and hopefully convince him why I'm the best man for the job. If the other guy is there, I'm going to gamble on not being drawn into a bidding war. If this guy's up selling himself and talk, I'm just going to leave him to it with yeah. Paul. I'm going to try and channel the character that I'm hopefully going to play these guys don't lose their cool under pressure they don't you know they don't allow themselves to be compromised so i'm just gonna be silent and be there and if paul wants to ask me something i'll i'll answer him you know with dynamite hopefully but otherwise i'm going to be a man of few words i turn up there and the other actors already there you know with green grass walking down his driveway having a chat and i'm like oh god here Dude, we go. head start on you yeah i'm like here we go so i tried to dress for the part subtly just give the part and 
you know, we went into Paul's kitchen and he was all oh, make your cup of tea and stuff. And then I remember Paul's daughter came home and his dog was in the room. I was just chatting to his daughter and playing with the family dog. And I think his wife possibly was there. I was literally almost just, I'll leave them to chat. You know, I'm not going to interrupt and try and butt in or just be standing there like an awkward third wheel. I'm like, fuck that, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's how, you know, eventually, obviously, Paul spoke to me and we talked and the rest is history, right? Yeah. Um, so then we're filming. And so I, I go to LA for two weeks to train with um, 8711, who are one of the leading action design um, companies in Hollywood. Um, for those of you that don't know, it was originally founded by Chad Stahelski, um, who directs the John Wick movies, uh, David Leach, who directed Deadpool 2 and Hobbs and Shaw and, you know, they're big guys, and Damon Caro. Damon Caro did like the, he works with Zack Snyder a lot, so 300, was Damon Caro, Watchmen, you know, all of those kind of things. So it was those three guys originally set that company up. They were all stunt guys in America who got together, I guess, invested their money together and set up a full-time facility to train actors, pre action sequences. And they've got some of the best talent, like stunt and particularly fight talent out there. And they're, they're super successful. They're now all main unit directors on big Hollywood production. So it was pretty cool going to train there. And uh, Jeff Imada, who he did The Crow and um, even Big Trouble in Little China, one of my favorite it. 80s films, he's, he's in it, you know? Remember Jack Burton in the airport when the Lords of Death punks, mm -hmm. the guy that's spinning all the, the sort of extendable baton and knife and like Jack Burton's moving back on his ass on the floor. That's Jeff Imada. And uh, Blade, the first Blade film, that was Jeff doing the choreography. He's in it, so um, amazing stuff. Yeah, he he trained Brandon Lee for a while. Like Jeff is like a real legend with great lineage. You can imagine it's like, oh my god, this dude. You know, I'm I'm getting to um, train under him and stuff. Did you did you have any uh, or, or who were your favorite martial artists kind of growing up? I mean. We just touched on Brandon Lee. Um, did you grow up kind of watching Bruce Lee or any of the, the legends? Completely, completely. Or well, by that point, I mean, I was, I'm telling you, I was obsessed with martial arts. I lived, I lived martial arts and, um, and tricking, doing crazy acrobatic stuff, you know, like, you know, video game type stuff. I really dedicated myself. So, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, Yun Biao, all the Hong Kong things, Chu Man Chuck, Donnie Yen, um, you name it, you, you name it. I was, I was into it, you know? I mean, I remember I got, for my sixth or seventh birthday, I got Dragons Forever on VHS from my cousin. Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung, Yun Biao, Benny the Jet is in there. Still today, probably one of my my favorite Jackie film. Yeah. So you can imagine the influences were very very strong. So I knew who was who in the in the in the sort of action world, you know. So you you mentioned uh, you know one of your favorites uh, and one of the names Van Dam, and I'm I'm going to ask you to kind of wear your uh, you know your Joey fan hat. You know what's mm -hmm. what's your favorite uh, Van Dam movie? Yeah. Um, Kickboxer holds a very special place in my heart. Kickboxer is a better movie than Bloodsport. Bloodsport is still amazing for a number of reasons, but Kickboxer, I think, is a superior composed movie. Amazing. If you just, yeah. Um, Kung Fu and... Yeah, I mean, there's so many things to love. The music in Kickboxer is just, you get goosebumps when you hear it now, the training um, music and um, 
the locate the sort of jungle location of it um was called what's so nice you know and you recognize this being an actor those two films i know he had done black eagle with sho kasugi and and no retreat no surrender little parts but Bloodsport and Kickbox were the first starring vehicles for Van Damme. And when you see an actor who is hungry, Van Damme was hungry. So he was putting his all into those films. He left it all on the, on celluloid. And you often get some of the best work of an actor when they're hungry before they're a bona fide star. They're not wealthy, they're not comfortable. This whole dream could be snatched away from them in an instant and you can see almost this vulnerability and this desperation and it's a very interesting concept of when you think of the archetypal movie star that has specific traits and isms that you think that's their signature style that performance style that makes them them it takes these actors two three maybe four films to find out what that magic is then it's a problem because they then become a prisoner of their own construct they're like oh the fans liked it when i did this the fans really responded when i said that so now i'm gonna i'm almost scared now to be uh sailing without a map yeah. now i have these set waypoints that i almost have to hit you can see it with arnold when he said i'll be back in Terminator, shit, people love it when I say a one-liner. Yeah. I'm gonna now be a one-liners guy. And, and you see how these things become crystallized and sometimes these actors cannot escape them then. And Van Damme, um, you can see the birth of where his signature style is, but there's still a vulnerability and a rawness and a lack of a sense of self. You're not self-aware of this is who I, this is what my screen persona is so as a result i think they're more endearing uh, those performances